Bless the Sabbath, each one of you, my dear brothers, sisters, and friends. Today we have a subject that is entitled, Amongst the Wolves. It's hardly hard to believe that Jesus sometimes compares our world with the world of animals. <coughs> For instance, Matthew chapter 25 specifies that when he will come second time, he will divide the world in two classes, yes? And he compares those classes with sheep and goats. Am I right? Now, I'm sure, God blessed us with serenity to accept things we cannot change. The courage to change what we can and the wisdom to make the difference. You can hear in this world a lot of, a lot of uh, sounds. But amongst all, what terrifies me the most is the silence of God. Yesterday evening when um, the presentation has been finished, I was talking with some of the brother nuts outside. And uh, suddenly getting out of this structure, this building, you see the nature, hills, and uh, the specific sound of silence uh, that belongs to God and imposes respect. I don't know if you ever thought that the silence of God can be feared of. But I'm telling you, brethren, when God is silent, silent, something must be going on. God doesn't uh, accept in our lives so easily to be challenged. I recall a historical moment when Mussolini, a European dictator hand in hand linked with Hitler in Italy, um, segregated 12 cardinals of the Roman Catholic Church because he didn't believe in God. He brought them to the table with wine, food, everything. He said, now we have to drink and to eat. And I will show you, I will prove to you that there is no God. Neither here in, in the earth, neither in heaven. And everybody was astonished. And he started to swear, God, ten minutes. And after 10 minutes, what do you think that was the answer of God? Silence. He switched himself and turn, turning to the, the, the 12 cardinals said, uh, You see, there is no God. Everybody was astonished. And because I'm a good man, I will give you another 10 minutes. And he start again to address to God, cursing, uh, swearing, doing, I mean, using the, the worst amongst the worst words of human vocabulary. <coughs> and in the end, he was uh, looking, spotting the cardinals of Catholic Church, triumphant, said, you see, there is no God. This is outside of our church, but let's come closer to our church. I visited once uh, a brother, family, and I asked him, how are you doing, my brother? And he told me, you know what, brother? I am doing too well to do not be forsaken by God. I am afraid that I am too well. I mean, there is such a silence in my life that something must be wrong. I am afraid of the silence of God. You see, uh, my first question is, can we run away from the evil in this world? Can we seclude or isolate ourselves in any sense to run away from the evil? Because the key text, if you could notice, speaks about 
a fact that you, the sons and daughters of God, were living harmless without rebuke in the midst of a, what? Perverse and crooked generation or nation. How can we avoid to be in contact with the evil spirit, with the evil doings? Can we isolate ourselves or we should set a standard to be the light of the world? Apostle Paul says in uh, um, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, if I'm not me, uh, Romans chapter 7, 19. So that I, the, the good that I want to do, I do not. But evil, that is just right beside me. It's interesting. Wherever humans steps or put their landmark, there is automatically a side effect or collateral damage. Wherever we touch or sign our presence, wherever in our world, there is a side effect. The, the scene is following. We are living in a world that is totally unclean. And, you know, it's interesting, brethren, that uh, we are living in a world where majority of the population chooses to be in a strong alliance. I'm uh, thinking about <coughs> corruption at the social level, political level, and even though, uh, even religious level. When uh, there was an uh, Isaac Rabin, probably five, six years ago, there, somebody killed him, you know, attentate. And the um, president of the United States at that time was Bill Clinton. He said, you know, we support you as long as you do the same. This is an uh, alliance but uh, based on corruption. Um, once I could see when he was elected first time or the second time the President of the United States, there was a parade of those who are in argument and strife with morality. Those who, whose name I avoid to pronounce, Sodomites. There are a few million in America. And they had a parade. They dressed as they wanted. They behaved or their deportment was according to their, you know, knowledge about God. And he was before the pulpit. And uh, suddenly a very well-known witch came and recited a poem. After all, a... Uh, a very well-known uh, philosopher of New Age concept came and presented a short speech where somehow Jesus has reconciled with Satan. This is the new concept. And after all, who do you think that comes to Benedict or to bless the congregation? Billy Graham, Billy Graham. Strong, powerful man in words and deeds long time ago. And he prayed to the Lord, bless this multitude of people. And he invoked the name of Jesus. Now, we are living in the era where everybody can dress accordingly, according to their expectation, according to their conscience. But what is important, brother, is that um, 6,000 years, mankind has chosen good officially, openly, publicly, and evil in, a, in his or its own hidden agenda. 6,000 years we said yes officially to God. And basically behind the curtain we said yes to Satan. Now we are living in the era where you can uh, assist to a polarization of the values. The good people are going in one side, they are majority. And those good people, they are going in the other side as a small, insignificant minority. 
And I ask you, is good to be like this or not? When everybody has the right to speak and to dress and to act according to their conscience. Is, is good or not? Is good, sister. Yes. You know what, brethren? Freedom is for hypocrites. Persecution is for the saints of God. And I tell you something. In spite of technology, the history proves that the Christian church has developed itself uh, in the time of uh, persecution and adversity. As soon as the church received freedom, there took place alteration of the values. And I tell you how. Uh, the new, the recent president of United States had a statement. The objection of you cannot be compared with the majority of uh, alliance of many. The objections of few cannot be compared with the alliance of many. So, in other words, he recognizes that we are living in a worldwide corrupted system. So, if you ally with the many, you know, then you have no rights to object. And this was the pernicious mistake that the humankind has made when Adam shook the hand with Satan in the Garden of Eden. He said, I want to ally myself with you. And yes, when you read Mark chapter 5, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you can see the results of the united cooperation or unity between mankind and uh, Satan. When you unite with the alliance, you have no rights to object. Uh, in the Bible, it speaks about uh, when I came first time in Canada. By the way, I had a problem with the language. And always I was confounding uh, the word alliance with aliens. <laughs> it was so hard for me to distinguish these two values. Alliance and aliens. But you know what, brother? Sometimes we have to combine them. Because Adam has got in a, the alliance of aliens. And this is what takes place in this world today. We have to face the alliance of aliens. And when you become, or I become, possessed by this alliance, I remember when demoniacs faced Jesus. Jesus is inquired a little bit about this alliance. Which is thy name? Which is your name? And the, the chief of, of the demons said, Our name is Legion, because we are many. And I'm coming back to what uh, George Bush said. The objections of few cannot be compared with the alliance of whom? Of many. So now, when the demonics accepted to commit themselves in the hands of Satan, did they have rights anymore to object? No. When you make yourself a um, friend, quote and quote, with Satan, the right to object disappears. In the 18th century, there was a, a man whose name was uh, Sigmund Freud. And he told the humanity by his writings that the man is half animal, half man. And because of Christ, the sins censorship has to be thrown out. And he said that uh, because of censorship, because of the presence of Christ in our humanity, the animal had to be put in its place to, to be controlled. And all he says, you know what? Get out with the censorship. No process of conscience anymore. Let the monkey get out. Let the monkey prevail. Let the animal from the human prevail. And uh, since that time, our alliance in the world... Prove, yes, man is sometimes animal, sometimes man, depends, you know. As the Christians are sometimes wolves, sometimes sheep. I have to admit that it's very complicated to play this game with Satan. But still, sometimes man appears as being a sheep, and in the next 30 seconds, becomes what? 
a wolf. In the Greek philosophy, long time ago, where, do, do, uh, where, where did we get this concept? Man might be half animal, half uh, whatever. Uh, you know, there is a historical concept about combination between man and animals. It's interesting, brethren, that uh, if you read the Romans chapter 1, there are some declarations that uh, are spoken by God. Let's open Romans chapter 1. Uh, there are some uh, declarations spoken by God. Uh, Romans chapter 1 verse 20 up to 22. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly sin. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. So they are without excuse. Because that when, uh, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful, but become, became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart has, was darkened. Prof uh, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into a image made like the corruptible man and the birds to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. It's interesting how the science discovers that we are somehow animals, somehow men, and let the man let the animal prevail. I'm wondering if you know, brethren, why the flood came over our world. Because there is a secret in our key text when it says that you are living in the sons and um, uh, sons of God in the midst of corrupted, I mean, uh, crooked and perverse nation. I would link crooked and, uh, and uh, perverse and unite these two words telling in the midst of Corrupted nation. Am I right? Can be a uh, similar understanding. Now, when we go farther on, first, Satan was his plan, long time, historical plan, to create an uh, alliance of all the worlds against God. And if you change, we turn your Genesis chapter 3, when uh, Satan negotiates with um, Adam and Eve, they said, you will be as gods. Listen, plural is very important, as gods. He doesn't say, you will be as God. So what he meant by saying that, was what, what, what he was intimating was that, hey, don't be afraid to negotiate with me to get in alliance. I've been in many, many worlds, and I made, I transformed the creatures in gods. So, by the way, you will not be the first experience uh, such as... And, you know, you will be as gods. Uh, there is a problem with the corruption of the mind. First, Satan corrupts the mind and then takes advantage. Now, brother, we are in slavery. We are in bandage. And uh, what, what the dream of Satan was to, to destroy, to, to banish the image of God from our countenance, from our, uh, from, uh, from our deportment in our humanity. Satan want, wanted to, to, to put the, uh, the standards or to uh, cast down the, 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 the standards of human morality lower than the animal. Goethe had a statement that says that uh, uh, the only difference between men and animals is just uh, is uh, the only uh, the only difference between men and animals in, the animals is that the first can postpone or delay the reaction. So what he tried to explain, you see, all of us are animals, but uh, uh, the difference is because man has intelligence, he can delay the reaction, he can postpone the reaction. Meanwhile, the animals cannot. But even though, is this true or not, I tell you something. Do you know, brother, the animals sometimes have higher moral principles than us. They don't eat in between the meals. Let's, you know, just a hypothetical example. Nobody is touched by this subject here, God forbid. But, uh, you know, uh, the animals have principles. You, you will never see a lion 
uh, committing adultery. Huh? He sticks with the principle of the nature. And when Goethe said, uh, you know, the only one difference between mankind and animals is just that the first delays or postpones the reaction, he was partially right. Now, uh, sure, uh, beside this point, I would like to go, how can it be possible to survive in this crooked and perverse world without being affected? And I want to go a little bit uh, farther uh, because this, when the mind is corrupted, when the mind is crooked, when the, the human becomes perverse, then even the Bible loses the meaning, as Brother Silva mentioned to the, in, the, in the first uh, you know, uh, uh, review lesson. And I remember one gentleman in Canada, he was visiting Presbyterian Church for a long time. And he finally was got by the police with, you know, some stealing, robbery, whatever. And when he appeared before the judge, said, you have to pay, you know, for your deed. And the gentleman said, you know what, sir? I'm sorry, I'm a Christian. And he said, how come you are a Christian? If you are a Christian, why did you do that? You know, my old nature did that. My old inner man did that. But the new one, I am a transformed, new transformed human being. So I, you talk, you address just to the old nature of uh, my identity. And the judge was looking to him, said, you know what? If your old carnal nature, the old man from within you did that, that old man will receive 30 days of, uh, you know, prison. And because the new man transformed by the power of Jesus was united with the old man will pre receive another 30 days. So the old man and the new man will unite in 60 days in prison. This is what means corrupted, crooked, perverse interpretation of cheap grace of Jesus Christ. Now, uh, young people, they are very determined to choose their destiny. It's a heavy burden, heavy burden for all the young people, especially for the ladies, very costly for the parents when they say, who will be the one who I will get married with? Who will be, what, what I will become? You know, some would like to become pilots, some engineers, doctors, so on and so forth. Sometimes the, the, the life interferes with your mentality. The problem is that there is only one destiny, if quote and quote, we don't believe in destiny, don't take me wrong. But there is only one point, one, only one destiny, only one commission that Jesus is giving to the humanity. To be, uh, it's uh, John chapter 10, if I'm not mistaken, to be, uh, 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 Therefore, I shall send you as a sheep amongst the wolves. So this is the only one destiny that a, a Christian can expect from God. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yes. To be sent as a sheep amongst the wolves. Now, if we have to be sheep amongst the wolves, which are our chances? How much you will survive amongst the, amongst the wolves? What do you think? <coughs> Pardon me? If the lamb. The lamb mm. is with us. Yeah. <coughs> now, uh, brother, uh, when we go and discuss about sheep amongst the wolves, uh, this is something very, very interesting. We have to pay the price. There is no one man or woman, woman in this world who has decided for himself or herself to become a Christian without being forced or determined by the alliance of aliens to pay the price. You are living in the kingdom of Satan and you have to pay the price of nonconformism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, I remember I read in one of the, the uh, American magazines about one little child, five years old, Eric Morse. And uh, they had some party, all the parents there, they, they, there was a company, you know, and uh, all the employees had to come, as is the custom in the United States and Canada as well. And, uh, you know, the parents were taking care about cosmetics and all the things, and the children were playing somewhere in another, you know, uh, uh, room, uh, just right beside the balcony. The other children were a little bit uh, 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 older than this Eric Morse. And there were 10, 12, you know, and there was a place where were few candies. And the boys playing determined the little one to steal one candy. I said, you have to go. And I said, he said, I'm, I'm a Christian. I cannot, I cannot steal candies. You know, I love Jesus. And they say, 
joking. If you don't steal that candy, we will throw you out of the 12th floor of that uh, building. He said, no, I cannot steal. I mean, it was simple, you know? I cannot steal. You know what they did? Those children, 12, 13 years old, they took this little child, five years old, and threw him to the balcony, over the balcony. And he became a martyr. Just because he was, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, fidel to one idea, I don't steal. One candy. And people in behalf of Jesus are lying, stealing, committing adultery, behaving like a perverse and crooked, uh, you know, nation. And do you want you and me to be behind, uh, beside Eric Morse in heaven? Brother, the level of spirituality that is demanded from the Lord Jesus in our attitudes, in our speech, in our thoughts, in our uh, walking, if we don't walk tall in this society, we don't enlighten the world. And uh, I, I think by the grace of God that we have this uh, chance to... Uh, decide for ourselves. Canada has a parliament they call caucus, and there they have a big Bible. And uh, they demand most of them that are Christians. And um, since the last government has passed, they discovered that 250 million dollars were missing. Sure, the guilt passed through those who were Christians, politicians. And if a little child is ready to die because he doesn't want to steal one little candy, those big fishes and Christians, politicians, can get in a heaven to stay behind, be, 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 beside uh, Eric Morse? No. Now, you see, uh, brethren, we have to decide for ourselves if uh, we are sheep or wolves because there is a, 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 question, a question I heard many times people saying uh, you know I am a sheep but I cannot convert wolves I heard somewhere here in states you know Americans cannot be converted and I said false there is not perfect crime but incompetent policemen there is not such a bad man that cannot be, cannot be recovered, but not enough spiritual minister to come to that level to uplift the man. Uh, by the way, in our world, brethren, we believe we have bad people. And I tell you, bad people do not exist. There are unfortunate people. And they are confounded by us as being bad people. Do you know why we cannot convert wolves? Because we demand that we are sheep. But while we try to convert the wolf, we discover that we are wolves too. So here is the secret that lack is lacking power. I'm going to convert somebody thinking about myself that I'm what? A sheep. And in attitudes and actions and reactions, I discover what? Oh, wait a second. I am wolf too. And this is the reason that we are not eaten yet. When we begin to become sheep, for sure, the wolves will act differently. And by the way, do you think that it's possible to convert wolves? Yes, then the wolves are sensitive to love. If you have power from God and you go amongst the wolves, uh, only humble converted sheep can conquer so many hearts of those wolves that you cannot imagine. And there is no such an art, art that to bring wolves transformed by the power of God and Jesus in the kingdom of heaven. You see, uh, sure, Jesus told us that our church commission is sheep amongst wolves. But the problem is that we are comfortable here, sheep amongst sheep. Yeah, it's fine. I don't believe that somebody will say, I am a wolf, brother, sorry. No, we are sheep 
amongst sheep. So the church becomes a ghetto. Nobody gets in, nobody gets out. That's it. I had uh, in Romania, backwards in Romania, I had a, a, a wolf. A, a very nice gentleman, otherwise, for years, he was coming to the church. I had a congregation, 110 members. And always in that Sabbath morning, he was coming in the first pews there, in the first bench. He was sitting and sleeping all the day long, up to 12 o'clock. And one day, I took my courage and said, Sir, why, why are you coming to the church? I noticed that Sabbath school, sleeping, divine service, sleeping. Why is the reason that he wasn't a Christian? He was a worldly man. And he said, you know what? Because as soon as the divine service was finished, he stood up, he started to smile, gone. And uh, he had a sense of reason by being there. And once I stopped, I said, hey, wait a second. Tell me the secret. <laughs> I, 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 I'd rather die than, you know. And wh why are you coming to the church? And said, you know what? I have a sense of sanctification. When I'm coming in the church, I feel so well. I come see her. I hear songs. And uh, to be amongst sheep, it's so nice, so beautiful, you know. But that man didn't have a sense of reason why we as a Christians are coming here. Just to feel comfortable. Sheep amongst sheep. So he just came to use the religion as a tranquilizer. And that is our uh, method many times. We're coming to the church, we pay some money there. Maybe God will remember about us, forgive some sins. So this is a little Catholic concept that penetrates our minds if we want or not. But I believe by the grace of God that we can change our world. We can, we can discover the beauty that um, makes us to understand the true and real mission. How can be possible, brethren? <coughs> To live in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, you as a son of God or daughter of God, to enlighten the world, harmless, without rebuke. That is a high-level character. And um, I have to co confess that uh, we have to empty the vessels, yes? I understood why uh, uh, Thursday evening I had to be here for that small lecture. And I prepared some interesting study. And uh, we were lost in transition there with all our needs in the council. And I said, wow, it's interesting. I couldn't speak. And I said, but who knows? God knows. And then I, Brother Jackson switched with me, the divine service somehow. And I had to reach the same subject, emptying the vessels. You see, brethren, to empty a vessel uh, in a spiritual sense... Uh, uh, takes time and uh, hurts. Amen. Hurts. Amen. I want to ask you something. How many of you would like to become a Jacob? <coughs> Raise up the hands. How many would like to be a Jacob? All? All? I mean, I, I, I'm raising the hand. Okay. So you too. But uh, Jacob the deceiver? <laughs> Jacob the liar? <laughs> How many of you would like to become um, Israel the conqueror? Israel the conqueror. The one who fights, who struggles, who strives against God and conquers. That was Israel, the, the new connotation of the same name. Brethren, if we lived in this world without thinking about Jesus, now is the time to understand that the silence of God should terrify us. The time is flying. Soon Jesus will come. And the night of the world will be ended. Now is the time to come back to the feet of Jesus. We have the alliance of aliens. And uh, to escape under this super worldwide system, we have to be both in the boat with Jesus. Peter was going to fish all the night. Do you remember? No success. No Jesus, no division. You don't know Jesus, you don't know what? Division. But you know that is spelled differently. N-O, no Jesus, no division. K-N-O-W, no Jesus, no division. Now, when Peter went to fish... He didn't anything. There, there was no results. And then Jesus 
gave him the secret of success. Hey, Peter, are you sad? Yes, Lord, all the night long I tried to fish something. There was no success. Can you, can, can you, can I borrow your bo boat a little bit for a while? Yes. And uh, during the daytime, Peter was maintaining the boat on the lake and he, Jesus was preaching both on the boat. Peter was surrounded by the discouragement, but not surrendered. And he needed that performance. And he uh, cast him down to the feet of Jesus, clanging to his feet. Depart from me, O Lord, because I am, I am a sinful man. I just want to the conclusion to read uh, one statement from Desire of Ages, who shows how Peter was emptying his inner vessel, preparing himself for being a disciple of Jesus Christ. The presence, uh, is deserve ages, page two, uh, 246, uh, paragraph 2. The presence of divinity revealed his own unholiness. Can you imagine? The presence of divinity revealed his own unholiness. Love for his master, shame for his own unbelief, gratitude for condensation of Christ, above all, the sense of his uncleanness in the presence of infinite purity overwhelmed him. You know, uh, here is about the boat, the boat that Jesus used. Before asking them to leave their nets and fishing boats, Jesus had given them the assurance that God would supply their needs. To use Peter's boat for a work of the gospel had been richly repaid. Unbelievable. Just for the fact that Jesus used Peter's boat to preach the gospel, what, what's happened immediately after the sunset when Peter is going to fish again? Just because the feet of Jesus were on the boat of Peter. Can you imagine? And the, the Zervage says, uh, feeling the, uh, the, um, yeah, the use of Peter's boat for the work of the gospel has, had been richly repaid. You have to be both, you and Jesus, in the same what? Boat. If you want to be successful. It's uh, unbelievable, brother, when we think about all these things. And just uh, to come to the conclusion, Jacob was affected by his previous life. All the village knew that he was a liar. At that time, brother, was very unusual to lie your father. Am I right? Was very unusual. Today, I don't know how is uh, the situation, but... Uh, was very unusual to lie. And he, he uh, fled away from the face of his brother. And um, the villagers, Jacob, lied to his father. Wow. And 14 years he was hunted by this thought. He was ashamed to come back to the same. You know, in a village, people are speaking. You know, they are talking each other, gossiping each other. Wow, Jacob, the one who lied. And you would like to uh, wash away this bad reputation, coat and coat. And you don't know how. And you go before the Lord God and say, Lord, if it's possible, change my identity. Do something with my name. I don't want to, to see people who know what I have done. And the Lord Jesus says, you know what? I will change your identity. I will change your name. I will forsake everything. I will forgive everything that was in your past life, your name will be Israel. And when he came back to his village, when he embraced his son, uh, his uh, brother, actually uh, Esau didn't embrace Jacob. He embraced a new human being that was Israel. How we are wounded in the process of conversion hurts to empty the vessel. Hurts, brethren. But this is the way, the unique way. And if we are not wounded in the process, we are not available. We are not available. I remember a month ago, I have a little child, Jennifer. And uh, something happened that she swallowed up. It was 8 o'clock in the morning. 
she swallowed up the coin, 25 cents, and it's pretty big for her. And I read a lot of stories, children died uh, with the candies in their, their larynx and stuff, and I was just uh, preparing myself to get out, to go to office, and suddenly my wife was screaming, and, uh, you know, uh, such a commotion. The other two daughters were scared, uh, afraid, I mean, terrified. And I got out of the bathroom immediately, and I went there, and I saw my child, three years old, you... Uh, you are in danger to worship your child when they are small. They, they, you love them very much. And in sudden, my wife collapsed. And the only one uh, uh, a message that I could hear from her lips was, Jesus, be merciful. Amen. You see, when human beings reach such a level, uh, you don't have poems. You don't have sermons. You say just what? Jesus be merciful. I was looking to the girl. I didn't know what. I, I saw her in convulsion. The face started to change. I said for myself, maybe 30 seconds I have, you know, to do something. And then, I don't know, I had inspiration from God. I opened forcefully her mouth. I, I pushed the finger, but not so much because I was afraid. I'm not a medical doctor, even though I'm leading the medical department. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I was pushed uh, with, uh, uh, you know, with the fear and anxiety, and I, I noticed that my finger didn't touch the coin. It was stuck on the larynx there. And I realized that that is a, a fatal death. And then I, I, she was, you know, she couldn't even cry. You know, she just changed pale, blue, blew all the colors, the face, because lack of oxygen. And then I pressed again the finger, and I, I squeezed the coin there. And uh, because uh, there was a licking, you know, uh, mucosity, the, the coin was uh, sliding, you know, around my finger. And somehow, I don't know how, I, I could catch the coin without seeing anything, and I, I took, I have taken out. And then uh, uh, she spit it out, the, the coin, and the coin was with blood. But she started to cry, and I was happy. Yes, when God takes and empties the vessel with all the demons and all the things, you know, w hurts. And we are wounded in the process. But it's important to understand that he, uh, he hurts us because he loves us. And he's not a butcher. He's a surger. He cuts to save. He doesn't cut to, doesn't cut to, to kill. And then uh, I was so happy... But what, I, what stayed in my mind, only two words, Jesus, be merciful. Brethren, if we are saved, uh, we are saved only by the grace of God. Amen. After two hours, I went uh, back. We have a backyard there. In two hours, I wept. I, I collapsed. I couldn't realize myself how it could happen. When I came back, uh, my little Jenny approached to me and she laid down the, the head upon my shoulder and she said, uh, Daddy, can you show me the coin? She, in three years old mind, conscience works. And she knew that there was a, a death uh, point of, of, of the situation. And she wanted to show the coin. And then she started to weep, she, to say, Oh, my Daddy, my Daddy. Um, we have a father in heaven and no, mat no matter how much will cost if you ask him to empty the vessel to fill up your heart with the Holy Spirit then you are a real sheep amongst the wolves and you will see how vulnerable the wolves us, uh, are when, when uh, face the real authentic sheep we are by the grace of God sheep and may the Lord help us even though we are wounded in transition in the process of conversion, our name will be changed from Israel, uh, from Jacob to Israel. Why? Because we are saved by grace.